Hey guys, so Good evening. this video is going to be a bit speculative, but because of the subject matter, you have to be. And you know, even though I hate that in some ways, I feel like a discussion does need to be had over something that we heard recently, and I haven't seen anyone talk about it, and it, it really, it kind of sucks anyway when you start talking about CERN, which is part of what I'm going to talk about tonight. If you don't have glowing, flowing things to say about it, then you are labeled a crazy Luddite who's against science and ignorant and you shouldn't be allowed to voice any concerns at all. You shouldn't be allowed to have an opinion. And I just don't think that's exactly fair. I mean, obviously we're not a democracy because they just did this. They're doing it. They don't really care what you think. They'll let you know about it. Well, they'll tell you some stuff, but there's no... Let's all take a vote. No, we live in a scientific dictatorship where the scientists are going to tell you what they're going to do and you're either going to pay attention or not. That's what's going on. There was no vote on, D does the world think we should be smashing particles and trying to let these people find the glue that holds the universe together? No, there was no major vote on that. I mean, think about it, guys. These are the same people, by the way, that think the world is overpopulated and a large portion of you should be dead. So do we really want them to find the glue that holds the universe together and then mess with it? I don't know that I do. Of course, I was never asked my opinion. Neither were you. Well, and they expect you only to talk about the surface issues the way they're presented and not what's metaphorically and literally buried underneath. Which is very interesting, considering everything that surrounds CERN is occultic symbolism stuff and metaphysical stuff they kind of put a lot of things right out in your face look at the logo you can't look at this logo and tell me you don't see the triple six here it's in your face I mean you have two little lines here and then you have a six a six and a six I mean you got that and if that's not good enough for you if you say oh no no that's just that's just a particle collider thingy or whatever it's supposed to be. Fine, that's great. Then go ahead and explain to me why it is that they're also making their acronym spell Satan on purpose. Okay, this one is for the system to analyze tremendous amounts of nuclear data. And they had to work real hard on this one because they lowercase the D so that it would spell Satan. It's not exactly the kind of thing you do nice. to make other people feel real warm and squishy about what you're doing. Just say, okay? And this is all over their website where they talk about how they had an experiment at CERN for a solar axion search using a decommissioned magnet. Experiment Satan, okay? Again, doesn't exactly elicit lots of confidence. Also not eliciting confidence would be this story on Joseph P. Farrell's site about how one of the original CERN physicists said we have no effing idea what we're doing and I'm not saying that that's a quote we the physicists have no effing idea what we're doing this is Dr. Goswami and he says here that seriously when myself Higgs and Ben who was CERN's first president first pitched the idea we never thought it would get funding it was going to cost billions for Christ's sake, he recalled. F knows what the thing does, no one does. Firing particles at each other at the speed of light can't end well. I'm just worried now we took the joke too far. So, it's, it's not like I'm saying it's disconcerting that they're talking about opening up doorways to other dimensions. These it's, are the kind of, this is stuff they're saying. It's creepy and a lot of people are apprehensive about it. I mean, you got Stephen Hawking coming out saying that they're going to destroy the planet with this, okay? That's Stephen Hawking saying it. He's got the scientific background. I don't. He's saying that. Other scientists are saying that. And one of the guys who was there when they first thought of the Large Hadron Collider is saying, we have no effing idea what we're doing. Doesn't elicit confidence. Now, moving on to this, this is, this is the reason I'm making this video right now. We put up this video the other day, how CERN will affect your soul. And... I knew people were going to get cranky, and some people did in the comments, but, you know, the guy had a lot of information to share. And he said, supposedly he was a guy who had worked closely on CERN. He sounded like he knew exactly what he was talking about for a lot of this, and I thought it was worth a video worth sharing. 
but one of the points that he made in here went by very very quickly and no one talked about it i mean this video has 660 comments and now one person in here mentioned this point that this man made and the point is this i, I probably won't be in trouble for this but they have a weapon concerning dark matter that they can put within a country or a specific place to cause chaos it's a weapon they've used it before countries are vested in the CERN facility every single last country in the United States we have three facilities here three I, I can't tell you where they are three I, I can't tell you where they are one is one they began to build but they couldn't but they went ahead and built it anyway it's in one of the biggest states in the United States and it's there and it's operational it's also going to be powered up during this time. Did you hear what he said? He's saying that we have large particle accelerators of the level of CERN, Large Hadron Collider, in this country underground and nobody knows about it. And one of the ones he's saying is in my backyard. It's in Waxahachie. He's talking about the super conducting super collider project. And this is where we get real speculative, but the question has been put before you guys. It's been put before all of us. Over 100,000 people watched that video and no one brought this up, but I think maybe we should. Is it possible they built the superconducting super collider, it's there, and undeclared black ops project? That's the question. Well, and if you're just quick to hop on the idea that that's not possible and it's ridiculous, you should keep in mind how many black projects have been sequestered away somewhere in a dark closet or a giant Indiana Jones warehouse that the public has no clue about. Planes, bombs, missiles, advanced technologies, weapons that most people couldn't name or describe but are available and in many cases have been used. I mean, this is what we're talking about. Things that have shown up on Senate budget hearings and it'll be a line item and it'll be there for a couple years and all of a sudden, oh, where'd it go? It's gone. I don't know where it went. It went somewhere. They don't spend millions of dollars and billions of dollars on stuff and then go, uh, ah, we changed our mind. Nah, I don't think so. That money goes somewhere and something comes out of it. Now... There's obviously nothing you can prove here, but it is interesting to go look back at some of this information about the super collider that supposedly never was. If you go back and look at this, you will see that they didn't just quit right away. It actually started in 82, 83. They finally decided upon it in 87 and they went full steam ahead with building it, and by the end of it, when Congress finally pulled the plug in 93 on the funding, and then the last people moved out of the buildings there in 96, by that time, they had spent $2 billion, and they had dug 14 miles of tunnel. The superconducting super collider was going to be 54 miles in diameter. It was going to be huge. It was going to encircle the entire city of Waxahachie, okay? It was going to be the biggest particle accelerator known to man. On the planet. It was going to go 20 TeV per beam, which, you know, CERN's Large Hadron Collider goes 16. That's just what they tell you. Obviously, they've capped it at that. They're not going to tell you what else they're doing, okay? But this was going to be bigger, and it was going to go higher, okay? And... Two billion dollars was spent, and I know today that sounds like some funny monopoly money, who cares, but back in the early, the late 80s, early 90s, you gotta think about how much two billion dollars was then. It was more, okay? And 14 miles a tunnel, and then suddenly they changed their mind, right? But also, if you look at this project, going all the way back to George H.W. Bush being vice president, it started under Reagan. Okay, obviously, but a lot of people have said that the Reagan presidency was really just a George H.W. Bush presidency. And that's a comment I've seen many times. If you Definitely. go back, you Definitely. go, yeah, you go back and read some of these articles about it, and you'll see that this 
project was always George H.W. Bush's baby. Okay? All the way back from when he was vice president, and he put it on the fast track. Okay? This was always his baby. The president stopped in a town called Waxahachie, Texas, which is home to the Superconductor Super Collider Project. The eight and a quarter billion dollar atom smasher is designed to help physicists better understand matter. The Super Collider suffered a blow last month when the House of Representatives voted to cut off its federal funding. After a tour of the site, the president spoke in support of the project. Now, the Super Collider. The Super Collider is one of the greatest scientific projects in the entire world. And today, new frontiers beckon. New discoveries await. New progress lies before us. And our adventure is not to sail the open ocean, but rather to go to the edge of the universe and see the birth of space and of time. Our vessel is not called Santa Maria. It is a super collider. But human imagination is still our compass, and human ingenuity and yearning for progress our only power. And to those who would sacrifice tomorrow for today, I say trust in America's future. Trust in America's incredible capacity for renewal and innovation. And trust in the spirit that is here today for ours is an eternal voyage to greatness, and each and every one of you is a part of that voyage. And trust in the spirit that is here today, for ours is an eternal voyage. This was always his baby. And actually, to, to make an even bigger point of that, they had 25 different locations they talked about putting this thing. And they finally settled actually on North Carolina because of the most important criteria in geology. So they were gonna build it in North Carolina. However, if you go back and look, two days after George H.W. Bush gets elected, two days, what does he do? The very first thing that happens is they decide to build the super collider in Texas. The, I, I never heard about this project. I guess it had really fallen off into the annals of history, but Maybe that's what they wanted. Two days after he's elected, they moved the whole project to Texas. And when I say move the whole project, go back and read some of these articles. They moved in physicists from all over the world to Waxahachie, Texas, to start working at local universities and set up their own little sections there. And I mean, this was a huge project. If you go back and look at the resources in it, like some of the speeches, this here is a speech that George H.W. Bush gave when he uh, signed the Energy and Water Development Appropriations Act of 1993. And he talks about how this was going to be one of the most important projects ever. 7,000 first tier jobs across the country. They had already awarded 23,000 contracts. Whenever they didn't think this project was going to get passed during the Reagan era, okay, they were calling up George H.W. Bush, and when he became president, he was having meetings where he would have senators who were opposed to the project come have breakfast with him. His first year as president was the first year that we really needed to, to make a big jump in the funding. We were asking for an additional $200 million from the previous year. We called President Bush and asked him to make a telephone call to the chairman of the subcommittee, Mr. Tom Vell of Alabama. President Bush did more than make a phone call. He invited Congressman Bevel and Congressman Myers, the ranking Republican, to come to the White House and have breakfast. We got the money. And he, he went very far. This was very, very important to him. In fact, his whole meeting in Japan, remember the one where he unfortunately vomited on the prime minister in Japan? That whole meeting was set up for him to go over and talk about getting funding from Japan to be a partner on this project, on the superconducting super collider. That was the whole reason he went over there. Last year, when it became apparent that we needed to really accelerate our request for international funding, we asked the president to elevate the request for the Japanese. He's had two meetings with Prime Minister Miyazawa to, to make that a personal priority of the prime ministers. And today, after the president leaves, the Japanese working group will be here at the SSC to continue those negotiations. 
when we lost the vote in the House this year, first of all, President Bush did everything we asked him to do in the House of Representatives, everything that he was asked to do, plus a lot more that he wasn't asked to do. But once we lost the vote in the House, we knew that we had to really go all, all out in the Senate. Two weeks ago, President Bush had some of the undecided senators down to the White House and convinced at least two of the senators that voted against the project last year to vote for the project this year. And I will fight hard and continue to fight hard for the super collider and call everybody necessary. And then you go back and look at some of this stuff about this collider. It's just, you know, little bits and pieces here and there, but project director was Roy Schwitters. Roy Schwitters was the chair of the Jason Defense Advisory Group from 2005 to 2011. Okay. Which is part of MITRE, the super defense contractor that is arguably part of the shadowy shadow government. I mean, this is somebody who was a professor of physics at Harvard and Stanford. He has degrees from MIT. And Jason, if you need to know more about that, if you don't know who that is, you should look it up. But yeah, we're talking about high-level scientists. Like Rand Corporation stuff. Who are directly advising the Pentagon on top secret projects. And he was the guy running the whole thing. I also found this, which I thought was interesting. The guy you saw in the C-SPAN video who was giving the tour, Don Capone. The magnet building was to have built a hundred or so of the specialty magnets that were required for some of the unique locations within the Super Collider machine itself. There were two other facilities. Interestingly, he was the head of superconducting super technology there. Uh, from 1989 to 1995, so six years he was there. And in the last year, he was seconded to TNRLC to work alternative uses for the project following cancellation. And he worked at Argonne before that. Well, in 2012, MagnaBlend, a fracking fluids company that makes other kinds of chemicals, they bought the buildings that are sitting on the surface. And what do you have? Oh, all of a sudden you have... This guy working as the director of quality and business optimization at the SSC facility. I just think that's very interesting and strange. I mean, they left these buildings sitting out there abandoned for years. Of course, they were always in really great condition. It wasn't like they let them rot. There's stories about how they're just rotting away in the desert, but they never rotted. I mean, the, the buildings were fine. So that's not exactly how it went down, but they definitely left them there as a symbol of this place being completely abandoned. Although, Aaron, didn't you say you found an art or a mention of it? Yeah, that was the scuttlebutt from a decade ago. People who did some urban exploring there. And, uh, you know, there were rumors that they were talking about from the area because, you know, Waxahachie's right outside of Dallas. People saying, well, actually, the tunnels were completed. At least that's the rumor. Some people claim to have been in them and in the buildings. And this is all before MagnaBlend took over. But what a perfect cover if really there was something that was completed and stuff was still going on or they hope to revive it in the near future i mean these tunnels were built down pretty deep they were underneath i saw some guy in a chat there talking about how he talked to one of these scientists and they were built down under the water table or whatever like way down in there i mean this is just the beginning of one that goes down behind here i mean these tunnels were deep Okay, so if there was something sitting out there, if there was a giant superconducting super collider 54 miles in diameter sitting out there right now, it would be way under the ground, and how would you ever really know? How could you really ever prove it? It's all totally speculative, but the way the guy says it in the video, he just says it. I mean, he just says it straight up like it's a fact. Which got me thinking, what if it's possible? I mean, this was really important. Oh, I forgot to even mention this. I just came across as well. This is a directorate of intelligence from the CIA on the prospects for Soviet cooperation on the Super Collider project, Moscow, about Moscow, about bringing people over right after the Cold War from Moscow to work on this project. And it says release as sanitized because a lot of the stuff in this report is redacted. So there's whole sections of this that are missing. But... Basically, it talks about the Super Collider project and all the stuff that it was going to be able to do. And then they go down and, of course, I mean, like I said, there's all these sections that have been completely redacted out of this thing. So they're not even going to let you know. 
but they went through and did dossiers on a whole bunch like see this page that's completely redacted who knows what that page was they did dossiers on key Soviet players in SSC decision making and they talk about their influence and access their cooperation their professional status their expertise and whether or not they speak English and how old they are they put a lot of effort into this so the CIA was involved and very interested in this project which is another reason why I'm sick and tired of hearing people say that things like particle accelerators cannot be weaponized. Don't use a particle accelerator as a death ray. Now, when I was putting together this lecture, I asked the question to my colleagues, my very esteemed colleagues, has anyone ever tried to develop an accelerator as a weapon? And they said, oh, mumble, mumble, Cold War, space, Star Wars, something and rather. No, that was their conclusion. Um, they were wrong. Uh, People in the US did think about building a, a particle accelerator, called a neutral beam accelerator, that they would launch into space, that's the first bit, which is a bit wacky, and then they would use it to shoot down um, satellites and shoot down missiles and destroy anything that they didn't like because they were going to have this super powerful beam in space. Well, they quickly realised that this was crazy. Give me a break. Well, but that's kind of the point, too, with this stuff. If something happened once this project was decommissioned or off the books, if that's going on, there's not a lot we're going to know about it. We do know that deep underground military bases exist. They're very secretive. They're black budgeted. And they could go as deep as 8,000 feet. They could be many, many stories deep. There could be any number of things going on down there. How, How would you know? Yeah. That's the point. I mean, people are getting all freaked out about CERN and they're getting all upset about September. And I hear you and I understand why. I mean, they've got their creepy occultic opera they're having in the collider, the dance of destruction. I mean, all this stuff. I see it and I hear what you're saying. But for a second, just think about the possibility that CERN is not the largest collider on the planet and that the government has bigger ones underground off the record i mean they won't even admit area 51 exists guys okay and we know it exists it's right there on the surface you're never going to hear about this it would be one of those things that's born black as they say it's a black op project from the beginning it would always be off the record but if you think cern is unaccountable i mean at least cern puts up their charts of beams and things and who knows how accurate those are if they're actually telling you the truth but at least they put some stuff up and let you know something okay this would be completely off the record run by the shadow government run by the cia george hw bush's friends whatever the military industrial complex you name it and you would never know and oh by the way the scientists at cern who want to build an even bigger collider now, are talking about reviving the SSC as a Higgs factory, not the original circle, which on this map is already there as if it's completed, but an even bigger one, which would encircle all of Dallas, between Dallas and Fort Worth. This, this here. And if you think 16 or 20 TEV sounds crazy, start looking at some of the numbers they're talking about down here. They're talking about 50 TEV, which is what CERN is talking about. And then they start getting into what happens if they want to go above 100 TEV. At that point, they'll just switch out the magnets and this loop would come, become a 300 TEV collider. I just think it's interesting that when you look at this map and they talk about building a new Higgs factory, they show the circle, but then they have this much, much bigger one here that they're actually talking about. So was the circle completed or not? Wow, it's hard to believe those types of people would let the big fish go, especially with two billion plus spent on a project supposedly just abandoned. I don't buy it. Our vessel is not called Santa Maria. It is a super collider. I, I can't tell you where they are. One is one they began to build, but they couldn't because they went ahead and built it anyway. President Bush did everything we asked him to do in the House of Representatives. To go to the edge of the universe and see the birth of space and of time. But they couldn't because they went ahead and built it anyway. It's in one of the biggest states in the United States. And 
there and it's operational. The Super Collider is one of the greatest scientific projects in the entire world. And it's there and it's operational. Everything that he was asked to do, plus a lot more that he wasn't asked to do. And I will fight hard and continue to fight hard for the Super Collider and call everybody necessary. It's there and it's operational. It's also going to be powered up during this time. And make no mistake, this is a battle being waged right now in the Congress between the patrons of the past and the architects of the future. I'm saying this because when this thing does power up, the immediate effects are not what I'm worried about. That's not my concern. The psychological effects on people is going to become quite evident.